Project Healthy aimed to uh, resurrect the fidget support in Helios and combine it with the control router into something cool. Uh, the naming is intended to troll people who care about whether people say hi-fi or hi-fi and also uh, fidgets and Helios. Um, right, so let's go take a look at it. Okay, I got this um, F-18 profile from Captain Zine with the screens taken out just because, you know, for the demo. And um, basically what I've done here is um, I took all of the uh, rotary controls and, uh, you know, you can still use them with the mouse and everything, just like always. But also I have a control router interface in here and the control router interface is actually in Helios. Um, I decided to release it at one point. Um, it's there. And uh, what's not released is the fidget support. Uh, we do used to have fidget support, but it was against a deprecated API that uh, doesn't work anymore, and it's completely different, so I rewrote, rewrote it from scratch. Um, if you don't know what fidgets are, fidgets is a vendor that sells um, zero or very, very low soldering um, toys, USB toys. <laughs> Basically, uh, you can buy like any kind of sensor, any kind of like, you know, rotary encoder, LED outputs, uh, switch inputs, uh, um, potentiometer inputs, all, all these kinds of things. And you can just kind of plug them together and plug them into a USB hub and and they'll just work and all the software is provided for you. So um, basically, it's a bunch of stuff you could have done with Arduino yourself if you wanted to. But if you um, just don't want to have to solder and you don't want to have to write code for that sort of thing then um, it's pretty neat so I like it and uh, I thought it would be really cool to um, to allow um, Helios users who want to have a little bit of physical cockpit um, without doing like a full build and without having to learn how to solder and program boards and stuff like that to get some of that so again this is obviously an unfinished project and is not in any way uh, being released at this time. Um, okay, so here's what I did with it. So I, um, when you have the Healthy, um, uh, healthy uh, plugin installed, you can add interfaces of type fidgets. And right now it detected all of these ports. I have a fidget hub plugged in. It's got six ports and one device plugged into one of the ports, which I already configured. So it's not doesn't appear in the list anymore. Um, the interface I did configure is this one, uh, fidget device, blah, 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 serial number device one. So it's by serial number so that if you move all this to another machine, it will match the correct device to the correct thing again because each fidget device has a unique serial number. Okay, uh, it is a, um, what I've plugged in is a rotary encoder. I've got to tell it what type of rotary encoder it is. I'm just going to do that, um, save the profile. And um, that's the only thing that it has. It has an output, uh, which is position change. So this will fire um, when you turn when you move the rotary encoder. It's um, plus and minus pulses, right? So it sends like, since you last sampled me, I have gone 137 ticks to the right, or I've gone, you know, minus 68 ticks, meaning like I've gone 68 ticks to the left. So this is different from what you get on like a, a joystick, right? So a, a real rotary encoder. It's just a relative position, and it doesn't end, right? It's like endless. And uh, an axis on a joystick is, you know, just from like zero to, if you have a really nice joystick, zero to 65,535, and that's it, right? And then it, you know, it stops. So you can't really implement a true rotary encoder like uh, a lot of the airplane switches, which just spin forever. And so um, here I plugged an actual rotary encoder into a fidgets interface because again I can't do it with a joystick interface and then I tied that to the control router so let's look at the control router configuration uh, I tied it to port 1 and then I configured port 1 and the control router to be 2400 pulses per revolution so I have a very high resolution rotary encoder it, it sends 2400 signals per turn um, and the reason that's okay is because I'm using a dedicated little fidgets box to sample it I don't have to do it over like simulating joystick clicks or in our in an Arduino solution like 
you know, just sampling the thing super fast, uh, which you can't do that fast. So um, anyways, uh, so I've got the super high resolution encoder. I tell it that zero is at zero. And uh, when it goes around one time, I want to consider that 1.0. And um, every four pulses is, 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 is one click, if it had any clicks. Mine doesn't actually have any detents, so it's not like a little rotary switch that stops. But um, I have to configure that anyway, so four is just the default. So I've configured that. And then what I've also configured is in the profile, I've tied this text field um, to the control router. It says if the bound control, the most recently touched control in the control router changes, then update the text up here. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go run it. on that screen. Okay, so now it's running. And um, so, you know, I'm using the mouse here for demo, but pretend it's touch screen. And then the idea is, let's say if I click here on this, uh, on this uh, brightness button, and it says bright up there in the corner, because that's the name of the button. It's just, you know, they're, the names there, you know, you could change them in the profile editor if you wanted them to be pretty. But the point is now that I'm going to not touch the mouse, I'm just going to turn my rotary encoder I can now manipulate this button and it's super duper smooth because I've got that very high resolution 2400 uh, uh, pulses per revolution um, encoder. Then if I click on something else like this button, then it changes to BL, then I can turn that one. And as long as I don't uh, click on any other rotaries, it stays bound to them. So I'm still turning it back and forth, right? Um, so the way the control router works is it stays bound as long to, to that control to, to my rotary encoder because that's the control I moved after clicking on something. If I had two rotary encoders, I could click on AOA brightness, move one of the encoders, click on uh, uh, this balance thingy here, and um, uh, turn move the other rotary encoder, and then they would both be bound and they would both stay bound until I you know, click on something else and then move them. So that way you could, for example, simultaneously adjust brightness and balance or if you're like you know um, working with the um, with the targeting pod that come you know contrast and brightness at the same time is usually pretty helpful if you have two encoders. Uh, in my case, I just have the one encoder. Oh, obviously because it's a fidget interface, it you can also like plug in LEDs and turn on and off LEDs with the Helios bindings. You can say like you know whatever like when Master Caution comes on, turn on this lamp or you know whatever right anything you want to plug in input or output those types of things.